So welcome everyone. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, a wonderful day to be indoors watching a screen. Uh, so uh, I went to see the show um, about, I'd say it was about a month ago now. Um, and the show is of uh, 130 works by 85 artists. Um, and really it's a love affair with the city. Uh, Eli Hirschfeld uh, has been collecting for, I believe about 40 years now. Um, and what, what he says, it, there's a little, little quote on the wall. This is the art I want to collect from my lifetime, scenes of New York City. The breadth of the subject is infinite, like New York itself. So, you know, basically, when we went there, it was relatively empty. Um, there is a masking requirement, and you have to have your vax card. But um, it's definitely a wonderful show, number one. And also, if you've never been to the New York Historical Society Museum, um, I did that Tiffany um, program a while back, and that gallery is always there. So it's a wonderful place to hang out. Um, so I'm well, going to dive in. Larry, Go they give a, um, I might be able to get some program from the New York Historical they, they emailed me, so. I'm they have that. tremendous programs there at, in actuality. I, mm -hmm. I talked to the education department um, and uh, when did they contact you? Um, I honestly don't remember, but okay. it was a, a little while ago. I'm, okay. I'm putting my email address on the chat function if you Great. wanna get more information. Okay, there you go. All right, so we're gonna move on. And the first piece in the collection, Washington Square Art Fair by Thomas Hart Benton, was acquired around 1980 and holds a special part, place in Hirschfeld's heart as it depicts Greenwich Village and his alma mater, uh, New York University School of Law. Um, really, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a perfect beginning for his, for his collection, you know, going to the Greenwich Village Art Fair. Very funny. Uh, Benton, Benton is, is really kind of a, um, if you're familiar with any of his work, he's a social realist. And, and there is a tendency in this collection to um, edge up to social, social realism in some of the earlier works. So let me, let me move on. Okay, here we go. Um, uh, works in the collection span from the early 1800s to contemporary city images. So here we have George Washington returns um, and they had credited this to a, an artist and now they don't think that that artist is the one who painted it. So it's, more or less anonymous at the moment. And if anybody has information on this particular one, they would be curious to hear about it. And then there's Andy Warhol and uh, this fabulous, bright, crazy thing. Okay. His, his realty back, real estate background basically led him to collect images of New York City. Um, the city's landmark became landmarks in his own life. The Brooklyn Bridge, where, he, uh, where he'd go to jog during his years in Brooklyn Heights, pieces by Georgia O'Keeffe, Andy Warhol, Reginald Marsh, Roald Dufay, um, Times Square, where he regularly sees shows and is involved in Broadway productions and is on a voting member on the, uh, um, you know, a voting Tony member. Um, he has pieces by Alex Katz and some other pieces that relate to Times Square. Um, and then many pieces from Central Park where he jogs now. Um, Hirschfeld, I believe is 75. 
five. I could be wrong. He could be, he could be a bit younger than that. His wife, Sarah, is also very accomplished. She's, she's Dr. Sarah Hirschfeld, associate professor at Rockefeller University. Um, they have 10 children between the two of them from, uh, um, she had four, he had five from another marriage and they have one child between them. So uh, quite, quite uh, the thing there. Um, let's see, okay. And this is, a, this is a shot of one part of the, the uh, installation just to give you an idea of what the spread looks like. Um, I have kind of curated this show a bit. Um, in my own way, I kind of group things together so that, so that basically there's, there's different thematic things that are in the collection. And I kind of group those together. When they hung the show, I think they hung it by what was gonna look good together. Um, on the wall, and I kind of play with it thematically. So you'll you'll see you'll see what comes of that. Uh, okay, and this Brooklyn winter scene, which is amazing. Look at that. That's Brooklyn, 1818. Um, uh, is one of the this is one of the earliest ones in his collection, if I'm not mistaken. I think it is the earliest one that's in the show. And then on on the left is uh, Chil Hassim, um, whose work I've talked about in in some of the other talks that I've done. He's an American impressionist, wonderful painter. Um, okay, so you know New York being a major port from the 1800s through the 20th century really um, was a very common um, uh, subject matter for artists. So here's, here are three images from that, that theme. And um, he has really good taste in the stuff that he chooses. Okay, this is um, uh, Twachman, uh, John Henry Twachman, who is loosely categorized as an American Impressionist, though this piece kind of crosses over into what they call the Ashcan School. It's very early. Um, uh, and, and basically, uh, Twachman was in New York City and in Greenwich, Connecticut. And in fact, there's going to be a show that I'm going to be talking about at some point at the Greenwich Historical Society, which is going to be happening next fall. Um, but, you know, he's, he's a wonderful painter. And um, Chase... Yeah, again, somebody who, who I've covered, the, the, um, we, we went out to visit him out on Long Island last year. Uh, but this is, this is a beautiful little piece, oil on panel, um, modest size. The really beautiful texture, you can see the brushwork and how the kind of resist of that, that um, uh, hardwood panel that he painted on kind of leaves the brushwork. Okay. So this kind of gritty, semi-cubistic um, uh, bridge piece, uh, the Queensboro by um, one of the things I want to say is basically um, many Europeans have a very different take on uh, coming to America and seeing New York. That there's there's just they're they're fascinated by it and have a kind of um, inspired alien take on what this what this city is all about. Um, 
So uh, this it's a really beautiful piece. I've never, um, Brumaire, I've never heard of him before this. And I looked up his work after I saw this piece and just, he's, he's really a wonderful kind of cubist painter. Uh, it's, but again, you know, the seaport, this, this theme of the, the, the harbor and, and uh, shipping, um, that, that whole business. Okay, uh, this, is, this is a terrific example of one of the preeminent um, early American modernists, John Marin. Um, he, he was really shoulder to shoulder with George O'Keefe in stature. Um, you know, they, there was like a Life magazine spread and stuff like that of his work. So back in the in the 40s and 50s, actually from the 30s to, to through, straight through the 50s, um, Marin was really um, quite renowned in, in America and in Europe. Ah, and this is this is a um, Reggie Marsh piece. Um, very impressive, you know, basically there's a sort of straightforward handling of, of a very complex subject and he's really able to handle this well. Um, Reginald Marsh again was one of those with Thomas Hart Benton, he was friends with Benton. So he was very much grounded in that social realist notion. A lot of his his work that I knew from the past is you know many figures and and just like a lot of activity. These landscapes that are in that are in the show are really you know a, a revelation as far as I was concerned. I learned I learned a lot about Reginald Marsh and really appreciate the landscape the landscape cityscapes that he did. Okay, and speak of the devil, here's George O'Keefe. Um, so O'Keefe did um, many cityscapes and, and you know, this is, this is just one of a whole series of things that she did from Brooklyn Bridge. And Raoul Dufay, a uh, French painter, you may or may not be familiar with this work, but uh, fairly famous. And this is another Reginald Marsh. Now, as a developer, um, you know, it, it, it really, Hirschfeld would, would look at something like this and, and identify with it pretty well. Um, interesting guy, this Hirschfeld. He, he um, his father was, a, was an immigre from Israel. Actually, they came, they, 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 they got out of Poland, moved to Israel. Both both sides of his of his his grand great grandparents moved to Israel when they saw the writing on the wall in Europe. They were they were all living in Poland. They moved to Israel, and that's where his where Eli Hirschfeld's mother and father met in Israel. Um, Hirschfeld's father came to the United States, saw the opportunity in New York, and moved the whole family over. Um, and he started developing uh, multi-storied garages in New York City. And that's where he, he actually, this was an innovation at the time in the, in the 40s. He was, he was actually one of the first guys to come up with that concept and develop multi-story garages, parking garages. So uh, that's where they really made the money. Um, when 
Eli got into the business, he he uh, started out doing doing some parking garages, and then he's done done huge projects, uh, including you know basically um, uh, joint projects with Seckendorf and and Donald Trump, Silverstein, um, and to be able to to operate on that level with those people and still uh, maintain his sanity uh, is quite remarkable in and of itself. He went to, he went to NYU law, um, uh, graduated, did undergraduate work in Brown. Um, so quite a remarkable fellow. Um, so, and he's also a Broadway producer for crying out loud. What else? <laughs> <laughs> so um, he's fascinated with the, the kind of iconic images of New York. And there we go. Slices of liberty. <laughs> it's really an integral part of the collection, um, these iconic kind of images. To have a good sense of humor doesn't hurt. Uh, so, you know, we got a Saul Steinberg, uh, this Peter Max playing with, the, playing with Liberty. And this is a really wonderful uh, example, great example of Jacob Lawrence's work um, with the kind of, kind of implicit narrative in, in the piece. Harlem Diner. Okay. And again, um, the European fantasy of what America is about. Now, I have it from my wife that Otto Dix did not come to America. So this piece on the right is kind of his fantasy of, of, of New York City. Uh, and, and, you know, if you look at this, this, uh, this character in the foreground, this, um, um, Yahoo cowboy, uh, with toting, toting a rifle and, uh, uh, a bandolero of bullets and, and, uh, a six shooter in his, in his, uh, in his belt, a dagger, bottle of whiskey coming out the back pocket. He's something else. So. You know, you look at this, you look at this piece and it's like really crazy. Uh, really wonderful piece too. Um, he was just as cynical towards, towards his uh, homeland of Germany. So uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't get the, the, the worst part of his joke because he certainly was not sparing with, with his uh, cynical wit. Um, and then George Gross on, on the right, another German expressionist who did come to America and taught here and, and had a real appreciation for American culture. Really interesting. Okay. And Red Grooms. Uh, this, I didn't get a really good shot of this one. It was at the, at the um, uh, exhibition. So I got this from a book. And um, this is a gigantic piece. It is enormous. It's, it's, it's 51 by almost 15 feet across. Um, and, you know, there's all kinds of wacky characters in here from the painting. The painting was done, the piece was done in 1967. So it's got a lot of crazy cultural stuff from back then. Um, it's not that clear a picture or I, I, you know, do a zoom in, but, uh, it's, it's well worth, it's well worth a trip just to spend some time with this piece. Okay. Um, this wonderful painter from the fifties, I think it was the fifties, uh, you know, through the window, really beautiful. 
subtle. And this moves us on to, um, you know, another theme, uh, which is really kind of heading into Central Park. Um, and this is a big David Hockney watercolor. The one, the one before this was from the 50s. This is from uh, 2002. It's a full sheet watercolor that's, that's in the exhibition. Really nice, really loose. Okay. Um, the one on the left, I'm sorry, it's blurry. Uh, unfortunately, it's the best quality that I can get of this, of this reproduction, but it's Don Kingman, um, who was a wonderful watercolorist who actually taught in, in New York. Um, and, and then there's a piece on the right by Mark Chagall, again, a view of the park. I'm not going to say too much about this one. It's just a beautiful piece. And then trudging around in Central Park. <laughs> it's uh, it's the sheep meadow. I, I don't have a date on this one, but from the, the clothing that they're wearing, it, it had to have been, you know, early in the 20th century, you know, 1915, something like that. And here is a Robert Henry. Um, Robert Henry is an interesting guy who, again, um, he's a transition from the Impressionists into what was called the Ashcan School. And it's really kind of, you know, they, they, they painted a lot of, of really gritty street scenes and things like that. But this is, you know, a piece from Central Park. And now again, this is this is another transition um, in in theme. It it's it's really um, I kind of put it under the heading of atmospheric quality. Say there's a there's a whole group of the pieces that that had this kind of loose, hazy, um, New York air. <laughs> okay. Um, at, this is a view down uh, Park Avenue on the, on, the, uh, on the right. And, you know, it's toward Grand Central would be very interesting to do a comparative study as to, as to the development of, of uh, I, I'm not sure when the Pan Am building was built in there, but this was pre Pan Am. So it had to have been from the, the forties. Um, but, you know, beautifully painted, really subtle, nuanced color. And uh, Abraham Walkowitz, again, one of the early um, 20th century modernists. He was, um, he actually showed at the, the uh, Stieglitz um, uh, gallery with John Merrin and Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, okay. And talk about atmosphere. These two really kind of fit into that lovely modest scale pieces, but really, you know, beautiful kind of monochromatic.
Okay. Um, so on the on the right is an early Charles Birchfield, um, really spiky uh, tree there. Very interesting piece. And early, it's 1915, 1916. So um, it was early in his career. But you can already see a certain kind of haunted quality that 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 Birchfield um, developed throughout his career. The piece on the right, you know, it's like I can I can almost hear Miles Davis playing in the background on this one. Uh, it's kind of 50s jazz. Uh, <laughs> Larry. Yes. Somebody uh, said the Pan Am, about the Pan Am building. Yes. Uh, it is now known as the Met Life Building. Oh, yeah, I know. It opened in 1963. 1963. For, for okay. a commuter from Westchester, it was a heavenly place to work. <laughs> That's one of the uh, statements from one of our viewers. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> so that, that piece that I was showing before could have been, let's see, could have been from the 50s. Somehow or other, I seem to remember, I mean, I was, I was pretty young, but uh, I seem to remember that image and seeing that building. All right. Ah, okay, another Reginald Marsh piece. Um, nice, loose. This is near, Hirschfeld's alma mater. So again, this would have been one that he was he was partial to because he went to NYU Law, so he was right there in in, in Washington Square Park. Again, you know, somebody like Reginald Marsh kind of got buried by the abstract expressionists in the fifties. Forget it. You know, this was passe and and. People weren't paying any attention to it, but he was a damn good painter. Okay. And here we go. Estes, photorealist. Um, this is a modest scale piece, but he's, he's known for these very tight, realistic renderings. This is not a great reproduction. It's a little bit, it's a little bit blurry, but, but uh, nonetheless, there he is. And on the right is a Mark Rothko. And you may not be familiar with this, this end of his career, but he in the, in the 30s was good friends and actually Milton Avery was one of his mentors. And um, so he did a whole subway series with these kind of abstracted figures and, and this kind of you know, rather, you know, somber uh, tone. Um, they're really, they're interesting pieces though. Uh, okay. So I forgot the name of the artist that did this and I couldn't find it when I was searching for it, but I wanted to show it anyway, because it's a really substantial piece. It's actually one of the largest single pieces in the show. It's gotta be uh, 72 by 84 or something like that. Um, big, strong piece. That's kind of why I wanted to show it in the installation shot so you could get some idea of the scale of the piece. Very powerful piece though. Um, interesting. And, and you can see on the, on the right, the textural quality of the paint and all that. Very much kind of like taking abstract expressionism and turning it back into figuration. It, it's, it's a relatively recent piece. It's from the mm, 80s or 90s, I believe. Okay. And then talking about abstraction, um, he, he did not do, uh, Hirschfeld did not collect a lot of abstract pieces, but the ones that he did collect were 
really um, uh, interesting and well-chosen pieces that, that really do speak to the city. Um, you know, offices to let. And, uh, and this Metropolitan Opera piece is really great. Um, it's a watercolor. Um, okay. And um, again, the, the, piece on the, the piece on the left, I am not 100% sure, but I'm almost positive that this is a Romar Bearden watercolor. He did a bunch of these watercolors of New York City, and they, they're really fabulous pieces. Uh, they have a lot of them at BC Moore, the gallery in the city. Um, and I believe this is one of them. Uh, I'm not 100% sure because there's no signature and I couldn't, couldn't find any other references and I forgot to take a shot of this when I was there. So uh, not sure, but on the right, is one of my favorite guys, Stu Davis, really wonderful artist. And uh, I'm not sure of the date on this. So I put 30s to 40s, could, could have been the 50s too. Um, but this is, you know, these are, these are some of the few really abstracted pieces that, that uh, Hirschfeld brought into the collection. Um, here's a de Kooning. Um, and basically what de Kooning would do is he'd build up these really thick impostos and crazy painting things. And then he would use pieces of newspaper to blot off some of the paint. And some of those blottings turned out to be decent paintings in and of themselves. So some of them he would actually sign, which you see in this, in this piece. And it is on the New York Times or New York Daily News. I'm not sure which, it might be New York Times. I can't read it on the side there, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> so that relates it to New York City. Um, and then on, on the right, we have a Giorgio de Curico. Um, I have no idea if de Curico actually came to New York or not, but this is a piece in homage to New York and from 1972, which is late in his career, he died in 78. Um, so de Curico is known as um, a, a metaphysical painter in Italy. He was part of that whole movement. And so his work is kind of this combination of surrealism and cubism. And we won't leave out Radiant Baby with AIDS Alligator from Keith Herring. Uh, so this is it's a really terrific, you know, piece. And and there's there's a lot of stuff in this collection, you know, that I haven't covered. You know, he's got he's got pictures of of um, of from um, Christo, from a couple of the projects that they did. They did the, um, the gates in, in uh, Central Park. So they have a bunch of the photos from that. Um, here is Yvonne Jacquet. And he could have picked out anything from Yvonne Jacquet. A lot of her work is New York centric. Um, this is a nice, big, substantial piece that they've got, um, 68 by 80 inches. Big piece, very beautiful. Um, and there is a YouTube that is Scenes of New York City, Eli and Sarah Hirschfeld collection at the New York Historical Society. It's 30 minute video tour, and they'll take you through the entire collection. So if you don't feel safe going to New York, you can tune in for a half hour and watch some more of this. Um, they, they, covered, they covered a few more pieces than I have in this talk, but uh, still, uh, I think it's worth a visit. And, um, and 
and that's about it. Um, let's see, next thing I think we're doing is David Driscoll, who is a wonderful black artist, historian, um, put together some landmark shows and his own work has been the subject of a uh, lifetime survey at the Phillips Collection, which just came down, I think, last week, unfortunately. But we'll share that. <laughs> okay. okay. Any questions? I don't think we have any. We just had you know, a couple of comments before. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. So don't forget uh, this program, along with many, many others, have been videotaped or, and are on our archived collection, which you could access by going to our website, which is chappaqualibrary.org. So uh, thank you all for coming, Larry. Uh, I guess it's very cold outside, so I would advise you all to stay in. <laughs> uh, tomorrow will be even colder. Yep. So thank you all for coming. A couple of thank yous, and we're good to go. All okay. right, everyone. Bye-bye. Stay warm and stay safe.